Hello Saints, today I'm going to walk us through how to get set up with the GroupMe software that will hopefully let us connect better at Kutztown Bible Fellowship Church. The program itself will not increase our ability to fellowship with one another. However, we hope that it will be a tool that God uses to help us grow in our fellowship with one another. One of the things that we learned in our survey was that our church wanted more small groups. With this program, I hope that we will be more effective in the organization of those small groups. This program or application or app allows us to communicate and make multiple small groups. In this video, we will look at how to set up an account, create specific church groups, how to invite other people to those church groups, create reminders, lists, polls, and calendar events. All right, so let's get started. Let's look at how to set up an account. First, you'll want to go to the website at groupme.com. The easiest way to do this is to go to your web browser. For me, I'm using Google Chrome and pull up Google. You can use uh, Microsoft Edge. Uh, if you are using an Apple, Safari, however you get into the internet to do this. Once you're at the web browser, go into Google and type in groupme, all one word, and then hit enter. Select the first a website that's listed and it should bring you to this page. At the top of the page you'll see that there's a section uh, that allows you to log in. Click on that. As you can see my information is saved as I had remembered who I was and all my information. Other ways you can log in are Facebook accounts, Microsoft accounts. Um, but the first time you do this you'll have to do sign in today. So you just go down here and click sign up today. It will ask you if you want to use Facebook or if you want to add an email address. I would suggest using the email address. Like I said, it's easier to remember uh, the information for that. So you just hit continue. Then you add and set up all your information. So obviously I'm creating one for the church at large. Make sure to add the one for our area code. Create password. Then you'll see that there's a pin that is required that's texted to your number to verify that it's your phone number for security purposes. I received the pin in my text message box and click start chatting. Your pin will be different. If you do not have the ability to text, below the box is an option to call me with pin. You can use that. Make sure that you have something to write your PIN number down and click Call Me With PIN. It will say, you should receive a phone call in a moment. It will call the phone number that you provided, so make sure that you're near the phone. It will repeat your PIN number about five times. Write that down and enter it into the box, like I had the video for it before. Everything else is the same. Click Start Chatting. Now let's look how to create a group. To create a group, click on the plus sign up here hit start group. Next, create the group name. For this demonstration, I will use the KBFC running group. If you want additional information about your group, you can put it in this box below. Another option you have is to close a group or to open a group. You might want to use this for specific committees that deal with sensitive information. In order to close a group, you just hit this little button here for the checkbox. To open it, hit, make sure the X is showing. In closed groups, only the group leader can add and remove members, change the group name, avatar, or topic. Once you've decided what kind of group you want, click Create Group. You'll see, you may see a notification that the multi-chat is on. Just click OK. To add members, you can use our church directory to add emails, phone numbers, up here in this box. If you're using your cell phone, you can also use your contact list from your phone to create and add members to your group. Another way to do this is to skip and make your group shareable through email. This might be an easy way to open up groups to the Saints email through a link. In order to do that, you go over here and you make sure your group is selected. This is important when you'll have multiple groups showing here. Then at the top, you'll see a drop down menu. You click on the little triangle here and then go down to the cog 
click Settings. This opens up a list. There should be Office Mode, Mute, and Make the Group Shareable. That's the one we wanted to go to. Go Enable Group Sharing, and you'll see that a hyperlink has been added for this group. You can select it by holding down left click and moving it until the whole thing is selected and pressing right click to copy it, in which you would then just add it to the email for the Saints loop. This way, anybody who clicks on that link can be brought into the group and we can share it in a very quick and fast and easy way. Now that we have set up the basics, I'll show you how to send messages, add pictures, create polls, and add calendar events. First, let's get back to the main page. You can do this by just clicking the X's. Then, to send a message, click the group that you want on the list here. There will be a couple of them as we get through this process. Click on the group, and just go down to the send message box and type in your message. Type whatever you want in the box and hit send message. Now that everybody in the group will be able to see the message that you just sent. In order to create a calendar event, you go to the same message box here and click the plus sign. Go to create event and type in the name of your event. You can type in all of the things that it usually goes into creation of a calendar event. So for the example, running time starts January 3rd, 2018 at 5 o'clock and ends January 3rd, 2018 at 5.15. I'm not a strong runner, so we'll only make a 15 minute run. You can decide whether it's an all day event, which it's just one day. So if we're doing, uh, if we're doing a community work day, you can do something like that. And then the location, you can type in where you want it to be by adding the address. Adding a photo if you want to have something fun running picture to add and a description. You can also see that there are options to set reminders. So you can remind at the time of the event, five minutes before, 30 minutes before, all the way up to a week before. So let's say we want to remember a week before. We can add that, but we can also add a second reminder that one hour before the event, and we hit create event. We can then decide whether we're going to the event or not. So for me, I'm not gonna go to this event the X. As you can see, it now shows up for all people in the group to see. I also received just now a text message on my phone that there was a created event in the running group. Maybe there are a lot of things going on in the group that you don't want to be constantly reminded of. The easy way to do that is to go up here, click on the drop down menu, go to settings, and then you can click mute. This will allow you to still be a part of the group but not receive the many notifications that you might be receiving. You could still go in and check it and as you can see you can still see everything. But you'll see the little mute box over here to show that hey Zeke's always asking everybody to run. I don't have the ability to keep checking my messages. That's an easy way to do that. Zeke will not be asking you to run on a regular basis. You'll probably have to ask him. Next, we will be looking at how to create a poll. Maybe before you create an event, you will want to ask people about what they would like to bring, where they would like to meet, and what time would work best for them. Let's look at how to do that. Again, it's the same box, this nice little handy plus sign. You go to create poll. You can ask your question here. So for our example, where would you like to run? You can add multiple answers to this question here. So from KPFC to Zeke's house, or maybe 
uh, you want us to start at the Kutztown Park. You can also add other times, uh, other options where you have different answers that you can give. And you can add or subtract as many of them as you want, but you have to have two. You can set a poll end date, which is really good if you're needing an answer by a certain time. So to do that, you just click on that and select the date, then the drop down menu. So let's say you have a couple of days to decide, about a week from this time at 5 p.m. and you hit create poll. As you can see, this pulls up to the entire group the question, where would you like to run? You can then click vote and you see from KBSC to Zeke's house or Kutztown Park to wherever. I didn't hit really that one. So you can just click from and then hit uh, change your vote if you want. And you'll also be able to, just, to see um, how many people voted. Um, obviously, there's only one person in the group, and so only one vote will be there. That just gives us an awesome way to kind of find out what everybody wants to do in a group uh, in a very quick, centralized, easy web method. The final thing that we'll look at today is how to send pictures and documents through the group me software. You do this like you do almost everything else in the actual group. You click on this, and maybe for this group, we need some motivational running picture. So you go to share photos and documents, you click on that, and we need some running motivation. So you click on your picture or document, you click open. Let's be motivated like this guy. We can do it. caption and we hit send. Now everybody in the group can see that picture and get motivated. Or maybe uh, there needs to be a document that goes out for a committee. You can do the same thing with this here. Again, you go there, click on that, go to documents. right up and you send it now everybody can click on it and receive that document that almost concludes how to use the GroupMe software now that you know the basics there are a few final miscellaneous things that we can cover like the side menu here if you get lost you can always click on this and close it and open it this my profile will give you all your basic information this will bring you back to the uh, groups section where you can click on the groups. This will bring you to friends and contacts that you've made. This will bring you to chats that you have left or groups that you have left. So if you're ever lost, you can always go to click this and then you'll see the group icon back up here. It can be quick to disappear on you. So I wanted to give you that information. If you have multiple accounts on your computer, the easiest way to log in and log out is to go back here on this cog menu, click on that, and you can see that there are a number of options here that you can explore, but specifically you can just log out. Once you click that, it will log you out and somebody else can log in at the normal login screen. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I know that we have varying technological abilities in our church, but if we take the time learn and to use these skills, I believe that we will be more easily able to connect with one another in order to be able to fulfill our mission statement, to worship God and biblically disciple one another, in order to be equipped for making disciples in our community, so that we can glorify God by sharing the gospel of Christ with Kutztown and the world. Thank you so much. God bless.